Good morning. Welcome to Cedar Hill Baptist Church. If you would please stand, join with us in singing praises. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the people of God sing His praise all over the land. Everyone in the valley, come and lift your voice, all those on the mountain top be glad and shout for and singing, I stand amazed in the presence. Savior's love for me. 
Thank you, Father, that the words we have been singing are the expressions of our hearts. And we pray always that as we come into your presence, it will be with praise. It will be with worship. It will be in obedience to your call. And we will come to you as your slaves seeking only your will and not our own. And as we come, we pray for those around us, those that we don't know who are suffering pain and sorrow and trouble to stay. And we pray for that portion of your strength and spirit that each one needs to turn to you for the comfort the direction of life and to see that this world with all of its riches and with all of its pain and sorrow is simply a place that we are passing through and that we are looking forward to that place that is eternal that place which is perfect because it is in your presence. And may this so overshadow everything else in our lives that we walk in the times of troubles, times of conflict, in joy and in peace and in victory because you're with us and we pray that your presence will be felt and be known and be demonstrated in each one of our lives. We pray that the Christ of the cross and of the resurrection and of the one coming again will be shown in the way we live that we have the confidence, the trust, the victory to overcome the world. Guide us in this service, we pray, that your name will be lifted up, magnified and glorified. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen.
you glad you're here this morning? I got so many hugs to give out. I don't know if I'll be able to get back up here to preach, but I am so thankful for you being here. Who's got children's church today? Oh, the Blairs. Guys, if you'll talk to them, you might get to learn how to call a turkey. And uh, that's not call somebody a turkey, but call a turkey. Good to see all the kiddos. And while they're going out, I don't know if everybody's involved. Where, where, is, uh, where is everybody? Can't find anybody. All right. Um, I don't think the Sextons are here this morning, but Michelle is standing up, so you just stand up right where you are. The Blairs are going out, so you know the Blairs. Ben, you stand up. Amber, the McCarty tribe, stand up. This is uh, our, Ben is part of his responsibility, the children's ministry and our children's uh, committee. And they have uh, am very ambitiously, Rebecca, just stay right there just a second. We want to look at you. Um, the, um, they said we, the youth do a lot of things, but our children don't get to do much. And as you know, we had a uh, spaghetti dinner last week, and uh, they pre-sold tickets. I had no idea what they needed in order to take about 30 or 35 of our kids to sleep with the sharks. And uh, you have any children you want to go sleep with the sharks? And <laughs> I know now, let's no good. Um, they're going on December the 20th to feed the, to feed the sharks, to sleep with the sharks. But I found out as I was traveling, going and inquiring about things that they need uh, $2,000. And I'm not real good at math, but uh, 35 tickets at $8 a ticket doesn't add up to $2,000. But you know, they set up uh, for about 200 people. And I came in, I saw all that, and I said, God, you wouldn't have burdened them to do that if you weren't going to do something. And so they made spaghetti. And you know how you really want to get in there and make spaghetti? How many of you ever made spaghetti for a lot of people? Are you enjoying this conversation? It's really good, you know? <laughs> well, 100 years ago, uh, we took it on to uh, feed the football team, and they like pasta so they can get ready to go out and, and hurt people. And so I got that. I knew I was going to have to make a lot of pasta. So I got that, that, uh, that uh, water boiling like crazy, and I dumped that spaghetti in there. And you know what happened? It came out a big blob. It was just, uh, and I understand that you all had that experience last Sunday morning, right? She said just a little bit. I heard the whole batch got out anyway. But they had a wonderful time. God blessed. Everybody came in. You know what? God gave us $2,228 and some odd. And the kids, that's everything they need. Isn't that great? But I want to thank all of these that are standing in the sections are not here, but uh, for the vision. And I want to thank all of you for coming alongside and making it possible. And we're going to have uh, more of that in the future, but uh, God bless all of you. Thank you so much. All right. Now, if you're visiting with us for the first time, uh, we've got a bulletin, and I hope you have one, and, and I know that uh, Peanut was giving them out, but there's a perforated area on there, and, and it's got our prayer needs on one side, and then on the other side, there's some information, and we'd like for you to fill that out so that you can... Uh, uh, and put it in the offering plate at the end of the service so we can get a note to you and tell you how much you've meant to us in worshiping with us today and visiting with us. So, um, but right now, so we can know who you are, you just uh, remain seated right where you are if you're here for the first time. And Cedar Hill folk are going to stand in your honor and uh, we're going to come by and love you real good in the Lord. If you have your Bibles, and I always pray that you do, if you would open them with me to the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 
6 and 7, we are almost through the Beatitudes after five or six weeks. But stand with me in honor to God and His Word as we read Matthew 5, 1 through 12. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was said, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Father, bless your word now as it goes forth, for it's always in Christ's glorious name do we come begging in your throne room. Amen. The title of this series of messages is Our Detour of Devastation. Our Detour of Devastation. You see, a few weeks ago when we started this, these chairs were here, but they were empty, right? They got people in them now. You can, in your mind's eye, Decide how any of these folk would choose to look. But you see, Christ had prayed all night for these twelve, not to decide who was going to be those disciples, those apostles, those that are sent forth, but because in the next 18 months, He was preparing them for what was going to take place in their life for the rest of their life. And folks, I want to tell you, every one of our journeys is different. Every one of them is different. I heard the testimony of a man one time, and his wife got spinal meningitis. And before it was all said and done, her temperature went so high that she was brain dead. And she was at the Bethesda Naval Hospital. And she'd been there so long that they literally had hundreds of thousands of dollars of, bit of debt and bills to the hospital. An administrator brought him in and said, we've talked about this before and you don't have any insurance. Do you know anybody that can take care of this, of this debt? He said, yeah, I think I do. As he was going up the elevator, he said, Father, you know what my needs are and you know how you've led me. When he got back to the intensive care waiting room, there was a note there to call a pastor in that area. He lived out in Colorado. When he called this pastor, he said, listen, I have got something that I need to bring to you because the fellowship of your uh, faith in Colorado has been impressed that you have a need. And they want me to deliver this. Where are you? In an hour, this pastor brought him a check. And he looked at it. And he, owe, he owed over $600,000. Now this was uh, several years ago. And it was more than what the hospital needed at that time. 
He took it back down. An hour after that administrator said, Do you have anybody that can take care of this bill? And he laid it on his desk. And he said, My goodness. Now this pastor said, Not everybody is called to have that kind of walk. But that's how God called me. Do you understand? Because he says, Listen to me. Listen to me. All of you all are going to have a different walk. But there is but one reason. He said, blessed are you who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. All the way through here, for they shall inherit the earth. For they shall be comforted, those that mourn. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst, for they shall. The word for they shall means because of him. Because of who? Because of Christ in your life. He knows everything and everywhere we're going to be. And he says, I will not leave you comfortless. Ten years ago, I got a call. I was on a tractor back here. I had my phone in my bibbed overalls. I just had a physical for the first time within, uh, for about 15 years. And the doctor called me and he said, uh, first time I'd ever seen him was about three weeks before that. And he said, Mr. Arnold, he said, you have a tumor the size of a softball in your chest. I was trying to be clever. I said, well, I didn't have it before I came to see you. And he said, well, this is serious. I hung up. I was sitting there on that tractor. I had a little grandson. He was just three months old. Satan ran right up into, into my throat. And he said, you're going to die. You're not going to see him grow up. Within about five minutes, my phone rang again. It was Charlie Grigsby, the man who led me to the Lord. He lives in Memphis. He said, what in the world is going on with you? He said, God has laid you on my heart so much. And I told him. Do you understand what I'm saying is that the Father knows all that is going to happen in our life. And so he says, as he was training his apostles, he said, these are the things that you have to embrace in your life. The first five are what we get out of salvation. Blessed are you who are poor in spirit. You see, we get detoured because we have pride. In our life, and that pride says, I don't have to depend on God. Who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. Not only do we have pride, but we have prejudice. We can't feel that same pain that other people have because, after all, they did something that caused that to, to uh, come on them. He said, if you identify with me, then you'll be able to identify with them. Then because of not only our pride and our prejudice, but our predisposition. Blessed are they that are meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Controlled strength. The only, way, only time Christ described himself. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. The power that we have in our life comes from Christ, the priority. He said, when you give your life to Christ then these things are all that He will take care of. They are all embodied in our life. And then He says, if they are there, then we will begin to demonstrate these next ones. Last week, we looked at merciful and purity. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. The merciful, those that can literally put on themselves that cloak of others. They have active compassion, one for the other. 
And the word for purity, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. As I shared last week, it's kathros. It's the word that we get catheter from. And he says, all of these things, poor in spirit, mourn, meek, hunger and thirst after righteousness, merciful, all of those things are in your life so that you will be pure. The catheter takes out the impurities in our life. And so, what is he saying? You have to be continually plugged in to the Father. You can't take a break. Satan says continually, Hey, you know what the, you know what the big ten are? Everybody knows what the Ten Commandments are. You know, and, and you're not going to really go out and, and uh, break those. So you don't need to pray today. You know all of those things. And, and you know what you're going to do here. You know what you're going to do there. And so let's just don't talk to God today. And many of us listen to that lie. And statistics that are 20 years old said that most Christians only pray three minutes a day. And if that is the indictment of your life, you don't even pray over your meals. And so he says, how is it that you are going to see God? You see, you see God when you see the evidence of Him being used in touching other lives. Because one day, we're all going to stand before Him. They shall see God, the intense inspection of the placing one, the one who has placed us right where we are. How many times do we say, God, why have you put me here? Why are you allowing this to happen? Why don't you let it happen to so-and-so over here? They're a lot more equipped to take care of it. We're always looking somewhere else and asking, Father, can you take this off of me? Why can't we just pray, Father, I thank you for giving me the strength to endure it. I thank you, Father, for every day. Why is it that we always look across the fence and the, and the grass is always greener over there? I went down and had breakfast with my father and came back and we were going to, to have uh, some chili and eat it before the game, and so hopefully we wouldn't get too much indigestion after the game if things didn't go too well for us. But after we won, now I'm kind of uh, uh, superstitious, so we're going to have to eat chili every, every game before Tennessee plays, and so I'm not looking forward to that. Any of you want to come and eat chili at the house? But anyway, so I made some chili, and I was watching some of the stuff and was thankful for our victory, and... and uh, Ohio State was not very hospitable, but they beat Maryland really bad. And you know, if coaches don't win immediately, then they get fired. And I just saw the end of an interview with the Maryland coach. And I did not know until early this morning the question that was asked to him. But his response is, you have never been on the sidelines and never seen. You've never been to one of our games before. He was talking to the reporter. And he said, what I do, I do every game because I am sharing with each player that I appreciate what they have given and how they have prepared for this day. And he said, I can't believe that you would so be... Uh, think that that is where I come from and having not any knowledge at all. You see what the coach did before every game he went to every player on his team and he said I want to thank you for the hard work that you have given to, to our team this year and this week and how you've prepared for this game and he shook every one of them's hand. You know what this reporter because his, he was getting ready to get fired the reporter says were you shaking all their hands and telling them goodbye? 
He said, you have no idea. That's the way the media does things. And that's how, what many things influence our life today. And he said, men, you're going to be taking places that you don't want to take. Be, be taken. You're going to endure things that you don't even have any idea that you're going to endure. And he said, blessed. Do you remember what the word blessed? It's not happy. It's being fully satisfied. Fully satisfied are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. He said, you shall be fully satisfied with your cancer, with your chemo, with your uh, radiation. You shall be fully satisfied. You see, all of these other beatitudes had a root in the Old Testament, but not the peacemaker. Why? Because the peacemaker didn't, wasn't able to, to provide his peace for the world until he hung on the cross. Amen? Until he hung on Calvary's cross. And so he's sharing with these guys. And he said, now you, what did he call Peter? He said, you're a little rock, but one day you're going to be a big rock. And he says, greater things can I, you do because I go to be with the Father. Greater things can we do for the same reason. <coughs> Blessed are the peacemakers. How are you a peacemaker? A peacemaker brings peace to others. Why? Because he has peace in his life. You know how you have that peace that passes all understanding? <coughs> You thank God. When Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, he said, Be careful for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto me, and I'll keep your hearts and your souls and your minds, and I'll give you the peace that passes all understanding. I was praying with Mary. Just the other day, and she's getting ready to go in uh, for intense chemotherapy. And I said, I don't understand this, Mary, but this is what God tells us to do. He says, we're to thank you. We're to thank him for that, that uh, organism that's growing inside your body that's not supposed to be there. Why, why is it that we're able to do that? Because Christ, when He was in the Garden of Gethsemane, said, Father, if it would be Your will, would You allow this cup to pass from me? And He was literally pouring blood out of His skin. But He said, not my will, but Thy will. When all of our lives are because of Him, when all of our lives are because of Him, then they shall be called the children of God. In 07, I had been sick for almost two years and we didn't know what was all going on and Ended up going to Mayo. I did not, I never have put reverend before my name. I haven't put pastor. My name was Ronnie Arnold. It was on every document down there. And in six days we saw about eight different doctors. And every doctor we were there, every time we were there, wherever I was, we prayed with those folks. I didn't even pay any attention to this until Kathy brought it to my attention. We were in another doctor. This was on Thursday. And when they asked for me to come up 
to give my information. They said, Pastor Arnold, I didn't think anything about it, and I, I gave them all that they needed, and I came back and sat down, and Kathy said, did you hear what they, how they addressed you? I said, I didn't even pay any attention. It's not for me. But he said, when you are at peace with what's going on in your life, then the world doesn't understand that. Doesn't understand it at all. <coughs> We're going to talk about all these guys in the next few weeks, but today we're going to talk about James. Is this James? <coughs> James was a half brother of Christ, he was a leader of that little church there in Jerusalem. Nero was the emperor of Rome and he was getting ready to persecute the church in ways that we can't even comprehend. And he decided that the best way is to, to deal with uh, any kind of animal is to cut the head off. And so he had James arrested. James' death is the only one that's mentioned in Scripture. But Eusebius, who is a first century church historian, shared the account of James' death that was written um, by another historian. And it went like this. As James was being taken before the mock tribunal, he was sharing Christ with one of the, the men leading him. And while he was being the man he was sharing Christ with became a believer. And when they went before the, the uh, judge, one of the other guards heard the testimony of the man who had just become a Christian. And so as they were, the judge passed sentence on both of them. Said both of them will be taken out immediately and had your head chopped off. And as they turned around and they were going out, to where the axe waited on him. The guard that had just given his life to Christ was apologizing to James. He said, oh, I think I've caused you a great, a great uh, disservice. You know what James said? Oh, no, brother. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The last thing that came out of his mouth and his head was chopped off. You see, that's what our Father is telling us today. I don't know everything going on in all of your lives, but He does. He does. And He said, if you are my child today, He said, be merciful. Be merciful. Have time to feel the pain of other people because you're going to need that mercy as well. Be pure. Don't let anger come between me and you because I love you so much. I'm going to walk with you through this valley. And when you have that peace, that passes all understanding. Those that come alongside you, they're going to see me. They're going to see my son. And they shall call you 
The word for call there is your vocation or your testimony is that you are children, not technon, we us. Not just an offspring, but that you have the character of God. You have the character of the placing one. Paul said, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Folks, today, do you have that peace that passes all understanding? The only way you can do it is that you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father, today we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Father, that you didn't ask us to understand all that goes on in our lives. But when we walk by faith and not by sight, <coughs> we trust you. That wherever you take us, you've already been there. And right now, Father, there are those that are sitting here that don't know you as their Lord and Savior. They can't look up into your invisible face and, and call upon you. And Father, I beg that before this invitation is closed, if they know if they died right now and wouldn't go to heaven, I pray that they would nail that down. There are those you've already shown that need to plant their life here and join in fellowship. I pray that they would nail that down even today. You know the need of every heart. We commit this invitation to you. And we're thanking you in advance for what you're going to do. And it's always in Christ's glorious name that we come begging. Amen. If you would, take a hymnal. 320.